Welcome to Kids Recall. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2019 movie, The Secret Life of Pets 2. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The movie begins with Max and Duke, a Jack Russell Terrier, and a Newfoundland mix hanging out at Central Park. They belong to Katie and have recently become good friends after the last movie's events. They now get along really well and are living their life to the fullest. In the park, Max watches little kids playing around and expresses how much annoying he finds them, especially how much they expect a dog to be playful with them. Duke, however, thinks that having kids around seems like a lot of fun. A dog walks up to them, having heard their conversation, and says that life after your humans have kids really changes. It is as if all their attention belongs to the child and the pet doesn't exist. This slightly perturbs Max, but they have nothing to worry about as Katie is not going to have a child anytime soon. However, things change on their way back to the apartment. While walking on the sidewalks, Max is happy about the absence of a kid in their life when a man crashes his bike into a cab and falls in front of Katie. Duke rushes over to check on the guy, and this is Katie and Chuck's meet cute. They become acquainted, and soon enough, they are hanging out all the time and eventually get married and move in together. This is a change in itself, but soon enough, Katie conceives. Max and Duke watch her growing tummy in awe, and soon a son is born. Duke watches the baby in fascination, while Max is skeptical and unwilling to interact. Liam is a sweet baby, but like all sweet and cute babies, he grows up to be a handful and annoying as little kids can be. As Liam starts growing up, Max's peace is ruined and he gets frustrated at the baby. Liam makes a lot of noise, throws objects, grabs Max's tail, and even chases him once he begins to crawl. Max's life is pretty tough, and he often tries to hide from the little terror. But as time passes, the kid grows into a toddler and shows affection to Max by one day giving Max a big hug and saying, I love you. And this melts Max's heart, and soon Max comes to adore Liam as well. He, Duke, and Liam get up to all kinds of antics, and the dogs come to love hanging out with the child and also come to love him and protect him. Liam also likes imitating their canine behavior and even enthusiastically eats from their bowls. Max still believes that kids are annoying but thinks of Liam as his baby and loves him. We then check in with the other residents of the building. Chloe, a big gray cat who sits on top of her sleeping human, trying to wake her up. When her owner does not budge, she uses drastic measures. Snowball, who was the villain in the last movie, but near the end was adopted by a little girl who lives in the same apartment building as Max and Duke. Snowball gets a lot of love from their new owner. Molly, who has given Snowball his own fancy crib, does everything with him like brushing his teeth and loves to dress Snowball up as a superhero as they play make-believe. Snowball enjoys being dressed up in superhero costumes and watches cartoons with Molly as well. One day, Snowball is hanging out on the fire escape after his owner leaves when Max peers down at him and points out that Snowball is not the ferocious superhero he thinks he is. After all, he's simply a cute little bunny in superhero pajamas. But Snowball will have none of it and shows off his moves. They also talk about the kids in their lives, sounding increasingly like parents comparing and showing off their kids' qualities. Snowball asks if Liam is still peeing everywhere and says that Max should train Liam before he goes off to preschool. Max is horrified at the idea of Liam going off to preschool and begins to scratch an itch. He's grown too overprotective of the child and thinks that Liam is only safe when Max is around to protect him. Duke looks out the window and tells Max not to worry and overreact, but Liam has just left. Max does exactly that and roots around their toy box for a walkie-talkie. This he uses to contact other pets to ask them if they've seen Liam, who he refers to as the package. All the pets respond in negative except Norman the guinea pig, who has been following Liam as his father has taken him out. Relieved that Norman is keeping an eye on Liam, Max relaxes a bit but still scratches himself with worry. Katie comes in and after distracting Duke with a ball, offers to take Max out for a walk. Max immediately perks up at the idea and they go out. Max is really enjoying his walk before he realizes that Katie has tricked him into going to the vet. He stops walking and tries his puppy dog eyes at Katie, but Katie says they need to get Max checked as he's been super stressed lately. 
She drags Max inside where Max meets other pets who are there with their owners. A cat tells Max that the vet is an expert in behavioral disorders and then shows her crazy. Other pets also display worrying behaviors, which is super funny, but also freaks out poor Max, who falls from the chair in fear. The scene shows us Max and Katie returning home, and Max is in a collar cone to prevent the scratching. Max is really down, but cheers up when he spots his favorite busy bee under the coffee table. But due to his cone, he's unable to get a hold of it. Duke then comes into the room and excitedly tells Max that he overheard Chuck telling Liam that they're going on a trip. This idea is super exciting to the dogs and they begin to anticipate the car ride. Max takes Busy B and goes to see Chloe, meaning to ask if she will look after his toy, but Chloe doesn't entertain him. He then goes on to see Gidget, who's a fluffy white Pomeranian who gets a lot of pampering from her owners. Max asks Gidget if she'll look after Busy B, and Gidget immediately agrees. She also has a huge crush on Max. The two of them gush over how cute Busy B is, and then Max leaves. We see Max and Duke having the time of their lives in the car, sitting in the back seat with Liam. Meanwhile, Gidget is napping, protectively holding on to Busy B as she dreams about Max and herself being a couple, and Busy B being their kid but the ball bounces from her grip and goes out the window, down the fire escape and into another apartment. Alarmed, Gidget chases after it to arrive in an apartment full of cats. The cats immediately get fascinated by the ball and begin playing with it. Gidget tries to talk to them and explain, but gets scared and runs. We then go to Snowball and Chloe. Snowball is showing off and Chloe is watching him, unimpressed when a dog named Daisy comes asking after Captain Snowball. Snowball immediately rushes into his room and returns in his superhero costume. Daisy explains that while on a plane, she and the other dogs were hanging out in the storage compartment when she discovered a white tiger named Who, who was locked in a cage. After she got off the plane, she caught sight of Who being transferred into a vehicle of a cruel circus owner. She needs Captain Snowball's help in rescuing the poor tiger, and Snowball jumps at the chance to finally save some lives and prove his heroics. The two of them leave to go on their rescue mission. The scene then shifts to Max and Duke, who've arrived at a farm, and the farm belongs to Uncle Jeff, and his family is here for a reunion. Duke and Max are unfamiliar with farm life, and while Max is hesitant and unnerved, Duke is super excited and goes after the hens. He's eager to explore all the new scents. He and Max walk around, and Duke tries to make a cow moo. The cow in turn mocks Duke for his stupid dog brain. Max says he's really missing New York when a turkey starts chasing him for no reason. We see a sheepdog sitting on an abandoned truck lift up his head at the commotion and howl once. The turkey and all the animals calm down, and Max and Duke are impressed. That night, back in the city, Gidget goes to Chloe's apartment to ask for her help in retrieving the busy bee. Chloe, however, is wearing a lampshade and high on catnip, being a typical cat. Gidget tells her that she needs to teach her the ways of a cat. And back on the farm, the family's having dinner outside, and Duke convinces Max, who's sitting by Liam's side, to chase fireflies around with him. Max then accidentally drinks from the sheepdog's water bowl, and Rooster isn't happy about it. Max and Duke apologize and are both awed and scared by the intimidating older dog. Rooster points out that Liam shouldn't be caged and be allowed to run around and learn from his mistakes, but Max is dedicated to protecting the kid from harm. We then shift to Snowball and Daisy, who arrive at Sergei's Circus. Snowball is being super jumpy and unnecessarily stealthy. They eventually discover Who in a tent where he is being trained by Sergei. The circus owner is very cruel and tells Who that if he does not comply, he'll be turned into a rug. Daisy single-handedly handles the wolves made in charge of protecting Who, while Snowball isn't much help. Daisy finally secures the key and they unlock the tiger's cage. Meanwhile, Max and Duke are not allowed inside the house and are forced to sleep outside in the grass. While Duke snoozes, Max is unable to get to sleep. He's not used to sleeping outside like this, and not being around Liam is making him worried. He goes to the window to sneak in to calm himself and runs into a fox on his way back. 
Rooster arrives to chase away the fox, and Max tries to blame his cone for the fox getting the jump on him. When Rooster asks him to get rid of it, Max says his therapist, he needs it. Rooster is unimpressed and yanks it off. Chloe begins training Gidget to act like a cat. She gives her fake ears and a tail and then starts telling her how to behave. She throws a ball, and while Buddy and Mel go to fetch it, Chloe stops Gidget, saying that cats do not fetch. She then pushes the dogs off of a tall shelf, instructing Gidget to land on her feet, like cats, unlike Mel and Buddy who have fallen life oafs. Next is using the litter, which Gidget absolutely refuses to do. Next, Chloe tries to mess with Gidget by asking her to eat Sweet Pea, their friend Budgie. Gidget refuses, but Chloe tells her that she used her one pass on the litter box and she has to do this. Gidget does so and Chloe admonishes her for actually listening. We then go to Snowball and Daisy. Snowball is ecstatic about his first successful mission and the two of them leave Who at Pop's place. The next morning, Sergey is angry at his wolves for letting Who escape and after discovering Daisy's clip, sends the wolves after her. Meanwhile, Gidget sneaks into the crazy cat lady's apartment where Busy Bee is under the largest cat's paw. Gidget manages to get the toy but wakes up the cat. Before the cat can attack her, Norman points a laser beam, which Gidget pretends to eat. This makes all the cats revere her as the queen of cats, as cats can never actually catch the laser beam. And so Gidget walks out, a celebrity in their eyes, and with Busy Bee safe and sound. At the farm, Rooster yet again criticizes Max for his overprotective behavior toward Liam, which Max does not like at all. Later, Max and Duke try to copy Rooster's sheep herding on a pig and accidentally break the sheep's fence. The sheep escape, but Rooster arrives in time to herd them back. Unfortunately, a lamb escapes and Rooster makes Max come with him to retrieve the stray kid, holding Max responsible for its escape. Max follows Rooster up a wild path, highly uncomfortable, and they finally find the lamb on a tree which is sticking out from the side of a cliff. Rooster tries to call it back, but the lamb doesn't listen. He then turns to Max to go, as he is much smaller, but Max is too scared. Eventually, Rooster's teaching and encouragement to Max about acting unafraid prompt Max to save the lamb. He is then about to fall down as the tree breaks, but is saved by Rooster. They return the lamb back to the herd, where Duke is eating grass with the sheep. Rooster allows Max to stay with him overnight as a result of their success. And before departure, Rooster also gives Max one of his bandanas as a souvenir. In the city, the wolves find Daisy in a park and attack her. Daisy makes a run for it and tricks the wolves and loses them. Meanwhile, Pop shows up at Snowball's apartment along with Who, who has been causing too much destruction. Snowball hides Who in Max's empty apartment for the time being. That night, Max's family returns from the trip, and all but Max fall asleep. He finds Snowball, Who, and Daisy, but not after Sergey and his wolves track Daisy down. Sergey captures Who and Daisy and goes off, escaping in his train, moving for the circus. Captain Snowball, Max, and Norman pursue the train while contacting Gidget for assistance in the chase. Gidget and the cats take the crazy cat lady off in her car in pursuit of the train. Captain Snowball, Max, and Norman defeat the wolves and Sergei's pet monkey while freeing Daisy and Who. Max, using his newfound bravery Rooster gave him, successfully infiltrates the train locomotive Sergei is in. The rest of the animals go and kick Sergei off the train. Gidget, having taken him with the crazy cat lady's car, offers the animals a ride back home. Life resumes normally, with Liam's family saying goodbye to Liam as he enters preschool, and that's where the movie ends. In the mid-credits scene, Captain Snowball creates a rap troupe, which only lasts a few moments before his owner Molly enters the room and hugs Captain Snowball. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. And thank you for watching.